Ah, okay. Hi. Hello. Um, hi, I'm Mark, and I go to West Side Middle School. Disturb the silence! My poem draws inspiration from the visions I sometimes have in the writings of Edgar Allan Poe. It's called Split Visions. What I'm about to tell you is lunacy. I say Luna, for that is my friend's name, and the acute visions came first to her. The abstruse truth is that they manifest from each touch of a certain stone. Then one cold January night, she presented me with that ill-fated pebble, a most egregious and unwelcome gift, for, my, for with my first touch, the visions that twisted eyesight contorted me into a fight against my will, a brawl to keep the little sanity I had left, engulfing me into the shape-shifting murkiness of the hellish other world. You should have known how I eluded, with what momentum, with what terror, that inhospitable terrain. But I was like, but I was like a child enticed with candy, unable to resist the lure of the forbidden. From the mist there emerged a tall figure dressed in skin-tight black. Her unforgiving smile revealed a tongue as long, as thick as an eel, with a haunting curl at the end. She gesticulated wildly, her tongue darting, flowing like a waterfall, testing the air, and she morphed into a red wisp and absorbed herself into me. When at last my focus returned, I saw myself on an ancient leather couch, healing scars athwart my wrists, vantablack bags under my eyes, my wits eaten away by insomnia, leaving me, leaving me a mere relic of my former self. A black cat perched on the edge of a coffee table, eyeing me slantwise, cocking his head first to the right, then to the left. Desperate for help, I clutched my phone from, from the table, but its minuscule weight was more than my feeble fingers could manage, and my hands, now as heavy as anchors, sunk to the floor. Then darkness surrounded me. Darkness, cold, and nothing more. I am seated alone at a crowded restaurant. Muted screams and sobs absorbed themselves into my ears where there had once been a wall. Now there was nothing. The cold, haunting, chilling, and terrifying flowed in an unstoppable stream. All heads turned, revealing their chilling visages, each with one button eye and the other saw black, their mouths sewn shut with moldy string. Then appeared a girl, her face once familiar yet unrecognizable. Her fearful giggle formed me in the sense of pure dread, as from her hair she produced a bloodstained needle. I or mouth, she cackled. I tried to scream enough sound did I make, and solitude surrounded me. Solitude, cold, and nothing more. Then I saw myself standing, straight jacketed in a padded cell, the torture master's eye seared through the phosphorized glass of the one-way mirror, but the face in the reflection was of my own. I opened my mouth to scream, but instead of sound, black blood sprayed forth, twisting and twirling toward that demented portal, shattering the glass, revealing a figure just in skin-tight black. Again, she gesticulated her tongue, asserting dominance. Then slowly, she decamped into a strange, misty, liquid crimson, taking with her the hellish otherworld and leaving me alone with the haunted rock that started it all.